benefit from the teaching, we learn 90% of what we teach to others. So what is reciprocal teaching? Um, we just took some points from the article that we read. So it provides opportunities for students to work with a partner or in small groups. The activities are structured so each student is accountable for mastery, but also responsible for performance of the group members that they are paired up with. Um, shared responsibility for leadership roles and group tasks, and the teacher is then acting more of a facilitator than giving that direct instruction to the students. Um, some, I, oh, go ahead. oh, yeah, so no, these are some ways that you can implement reciprocal teaching within your lessons or within um, just your classroom. Um, one of probably the most popular ones is turn to your partner, turn to an elbow partner, um, things like that. That's the one that we were going to be using in our lesson today. Um, jigsaw is another really big part of reciprocal teaching. Um, assigning group roles, so a reporter, recorder, observer, um, those types of roles as well. And then I do that one. Yep, there's drill partners and peer review pairs. And there was some more in the article, so if you're interested in more ideas, there's some more suggestions in there. All right, so we're now going to practice using these methods for the scientific method. So you are all now fourth graders, and we introduced the scientific method yesterday. So here's a little review of all of our stuff, okay? So, all right, class, we're gonna review the scientific method that we talked about yesterday. So I'd like you to turn to an elbow partner, so somebody sitting right next to you, not halfway across the room, and share something you remember from yesterday's lesson. All right, so we'll give you about 30 seconds. Turn to a partner and share what you know, go. So, in order to make sure we really understand this before we do any experiments, I heard lots of good discussions, I heard things about many steps, Somebody was absent yesterday, so their elbow partner was filling them in on everything that they needed to know. And we're gonna get some more practice with this. So the next thing we're gonna do is you're gonna become an expert. We are gonna count you off numbers one through five, and you're gonna get put into a group. So if you're a number one, you're gonna focus on step one, asking a question. So your group is gonna become the expert on that topic, and then you get to teach the rest of the class. So by the end of the day, we will all know how to do the five steps. So, when I point to you, count your numbers, one through five. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, quattro, <laughs> five, one, two. All right, now before we split up into groups, we wanna make sure you understand the roles that you have. Mm -hmm. So we have a lovely little clip, a how to, in fact, believe it or not, that is gonna show you all of the expectations that you are <laughs> for being in a group. So I'm just fine. <laughs> awesome. Best part of the oh <laughs> Well, we don't have sound. Okay. Oh. Well, we can read it. We Turn also on. thought like this would be good because it breaks it down into each of the roles and responsibilities, mm -hmm. especially for younger students who need that um, like expectations of each of them, so we would stop and talk about them before we would just assign our students all of these roles. So we tried to use um, both of them. So we jigsawed you, so we counted you off, you're gonna be in groups, you're gonna become the experts, and then again, we're also assigning roles so you know exactly what you're doing, everybody has a responsibility, and then the reciprocal teaching would continue either the end of the lesson or the next day when you come up and teach um, everybody after that. Here we go. That's how you, how you use reciprocal teaching in, in the example of the scientific method. 